fighting a southpaw, it can be pretty awkward. It can be annoying. And it can feel a little bit naked at first. Never fighting a southpaw ever in your life and suddenly someone's left-handed and it just bedazzles things in here. But these are my five top tips for when you are sparring or fighting a southpaw. First one it is fighting the lead hand, the hand position. Now, let's get some props here. What looks like a hand in my bedroom? Mm, we'll go with this book, yeah? Hand position. I'm going to fight the lead hand. So imagine this as your opponent's lead hand. If I ever get to this situation, I'm in a bad situation. Because they can start parrying that down and jabbing, jabbing me in the face. So what I want to do when I'm parrying is parrying up. I never, ever want to let them get on top. As soon as they're on top, they've got the better hand and the better side of this fight. If they do get on top, this is when I'm going to be using my footwork to get back out of range. I don't want to be playing in that sort of range when they've got control of my lead hand. If I can, I'm going to work to get on top myself because then I can start parrying the hand down and then coming in with my jabs. But... Don't let someone, or a southpaw, get on top of your lead hand. Because they'll just start beating you, and then this goes on to the next point, their foot position. If they can get the hand on top of your hand, it's going to be easier for them to get their foot position. And by this, it is a game of not inches, not centimetres, whatever, what is it, miller, miller centimetres, is that the word? Whatever it is, I'm going to type it in now, what is it? Is it millimetres actually? Yeah, millimetres. I don't know what I was on about millicentimetres. But you are going to work on that. Get in millimetres. Toe to toe. Well, use my fingers actually. These are your big toes, imagine. All you've got to do is get it to the outside. Because if your toe is to the outside, your head's going to be in a different line and then it's going to leave shots down the middle a little bit easier to land because you've got that outside angle they are going to be trying to do exactly the same. And if they are able to do this, same thing again. Clear the range, and then you can come back in. Next point, you want to get really, really good at chaining off single legs. If you like takedowns and you like to wrestle, your entries are going to be a little bit different because the stance is the other way around. That means you've got to get really good at chaining from the single leg. You don't even need to be good at finishing the single leg. You're just going to set them up to grab that front leg and you're going to chain from there. Single leg to double leg to body lock, but you need to be able to flow from there. Good thing you can do is just do some drills at 20% pace to get that motion going. If you can only grab a takedown and only go for that single takedown, it's going to be a little bit harder against a southpaw because they're going to be drilling that single leg takedown over and over again because they know that's what their opposition is most likely going to be drilling single leg takedowns what I say get good at drilling and chaining from those single leg takedowns point number four use your rear kick use your back kick and I like doing this off the cross Ooh, let's get out in space let's move this chair I like doing it off this backhand here so I can throw the backhand and throw my rear leg up from there. It's a bit of a tight one in my bedroom. But you're going to use that. You're going to use the cross to hide the kicks. So then you can start bringing your leg up. This also works on the foot position. I get my foot to the outside angle. I can then start lifting my kicks up. Boom. And going from there. It doesn't have to be head kicks. Body kicks. Beautiful as well. And the low kicks if you wish. But remember... Most likely, don't smash them in 100% from the get-go because if they turn their knee, it's going to hurt your shin a lot. And I mean, a lot. And the last one, very basic. Very basic. And that is... Just switch your stance. You can't do this one if you can't fight Southpaw at all. But if you are alright at Southpaw, and you're going orthodox for your Southpaw... What you want to do is literally switch to southpaw, so now it's southpaw v southpaw, because they haven't drilled that very much. To them, it feels naked. And when I do this personally, 
against Southpaws, I land a lot more. They've been fighting Orthodox people or sparring the majority of their journey or career. If you switch it, you put a little spanner in their head now, they don't know what to do. They're panicking. You're going to switch the boat on the other end. And then, and then you're just going to spar from Southpaw. And then problems are solved. Problem is, if you don't spar Southpaw ever, it's not really going to work. For me, I can just switch and I start landing shots that might not land from Orthodox. And it's just conventional v conventional now. Orthodox v Orthodox. But it's the other way around. Southpaw v Southpaw. But they're my five tricks or tips when sparring the opposite stance. Usually, for me, I'm Orthodox. That'll be Southpaw. But if you're a Southpaw and you're fighting an Orthodox, you can use exactly these tips as well. Number one, hand position. Number two, we have the foot position, getting that outside angle. Number three, we have get good at chaining from a single leg. Number four, we have getting good with that rear leg kick. Well, not leg kick, but any kick, but that rear kick. And number five, just switch bloody stance. And they're my tips to success to spark out and knock out your opposite stance fighters. That's how we do things on day, because we're built different. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bish, bash, bosh, pow!